Welcome again, Votoms collectors, in particular the Actic Gear line, which is the 148 scale Votoms put out by Takara Tomi. And Sunrise owns the franchise of Votoms. Let's see, this is Actic Gear AG EX07, so extra special apparently. Uh, some other models in the lineup of Actic Gears. I think I have all those actually. So, okay. No date on the box, but it's probably on the inside, on the instructions, that's my experience. Nothing on the sides really, but on the back, nice little images here. I could not find any information about the Riemann squad, but they're all red shoulders, meaning they're like a, an elite group of uh, Rotom's uh, operators, I guess. These are walking tanks, if you're unfamiliar with Votoms. There's like a person inside this here, and it controls this walking tank. In fact, they can actually crouch down, and the person can get in and out. So here's some features, moving features of all these little things. And I was really just after this one. I think I actually have the other ones that I bought loose locally, although at the time I didn't know what they were. This looks like it's a brand new package. So now we got a bunch of extra bits, one for each robot, I guess. I'm curious. I let's see if the, I have a suspicion these are all identical. This one has a red ring here. See that red ring there. I see it there. This has a backpack. That has a backpack. This one does not. Interesting. Okay, so I think these two bags here are identical. So that must be the flanking ones. And then this one doesn't have a backpack apparently. So maybe that goes for that guy. Well, the instruction manual will, will help us figure that out. So let me put those aside for now. And let's just take a look at these. No, no tape, apparently. This is a pretty flimsy uh, shrink vacuum form. This is pretty thin. But it's fine, it didn't show up damage. Oh, I see. Yeah, so these two backpacks probably go with these flanking ones, and then this backpack goes with this guy here. Alright, and then there's a crossbow mechanism here, and some folded antenna piece, um, side machine guns for these two characters. So, what I'm wondering is if I actually have... No, I don't think I have these guys. I don't, I don't recognize this backpack, so... Let's start with this, these flanking guys. But these two, oh, I see. This one also has a missile pod, whereas this guy does not. Hmm. All right. So what I'm gonna have to do is add the the hooks because the backpack won't go on. So, all right. Let's stick all this stuff out here because this, this thing is in the in the way. Actually, this like crossbow is that silverized plastic, which doesn't look very good. I might have to come. I might have to spray paint that actually, because I despise the look of that type of plastic. Okay. So I think I separate all those parts out properly. Alright, I went and painted that piece, so while that's drying, we'll get this other one going. One thing that I've noticed different from, on these Votoms is there's actually a square peg on this piece. I've never seen that on, on other Votoms. But otherwise, these two are, I, I mean, not otherwise, these two are just straight up identical. So I'm only going to build one of them, the one with the rocket launcher. This other one I'll, I'll sell on eBay or something like that. Alright, so I'll put that aside. And then uh, this must be the 
the one that goes with it. This one goes with this guy. And then yeah, these are the identical ones, so let's just, I'll just open one. What's weird about this particular set is there's no instructions. I looked in the box and you saw me open it. This is the very first one I've ever seen with absolutely zero instructions whatsoever. So, very strange. It does come with a little card here. Type 1. What's the other one? I guess that's a Type 2. This is Type 1. Okay. So you can fold this up in a triangle if you wanted to. But I don't really bother. I don't have room for those things. So we're going to put this one aside. We're going to work on this one here. And I'm going to have to readjust the camera so you can see what's going on. Yeah, all right. So just looking at the sprue, we do have a pilot, you know, in, this, in the hands on this one, some armor plates, some more armor plates to snap on the body, some uh, additional backpack parts and then uh, the regular standard rifle and it's nice that it's pre-painted in certain areas so
All right, let's go over the articulation of this guy before I put everything on. Uh, it came with this figure, but I had a, a gray one from a different uh, Votom, so I popped that guy in here. Uh, to get this hatch open, you have to pull up the back first and expose the hinge like that. That way it doesn't collide with the, the back. So it's much better, to, I think, to have a gray person than the one. It came with the green one, though. Okay, uh, yeah, you gotta put this thing in after the person, the little controls and stuff. So you can kind of see an indication that the head would rotate as well. Uh, there's also some nice greebly effects inside of that thing. So pop that in the back. So yeah, the head will rotate. This visor obviously goes up and down, but on that visor you got the optics, and those will slide left and right. So that's that's really cool. And then the optics themselves will rotate, so it's really neat. You know, a lot of articulation on something so small. The antenna will, you know, move back and forth. The shoulders will, the armor on it will pivot. Uh-oh. You'll see that little D-ring thing. It's just a tension fit. Yeah, so... But I don't glue those because I think someday I might do a diorama and suspend them by cables uh, as they're helicoptered into battle. All right, so typical stuff here with the Votoms. you got a peg in the shoulder and then uh, a ball on the end so the arm can rotate and also pivot in and out. The bicep will rotate and there's a single hinge here for the arm. So it bends around 90 degrees. Uh, I also glue these things in because I've lost several of them. So I always crazy glue the elbow pad. There's a punch mechanism that slides in and out. And actually I seem to have forgotten the little wrist armor that just pops on here. There's a little bit of a groove. You know, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see. Let me focus. So you want to try to make sure you follow the grooves landing these little dots here on the armor piece in. Otherwise, you'll probably shear them off. So, it seems like I want to go like that. Yeah. So, that's nice that that articulates. And then the hand is on a, a ball peg as well. If you want to swap it out, well, I'll do that last because we're going to put the rifle on. <coughs> Excuse me. What's nice is these side uh, boxes, the ammo cans, can come off. I took this one off and I put on the three, three magazines for the punch mechanism. And then it seems like the little peg on the back can hold, also hit, fit these things as well. What I don't know is what these little green boxes are for. This doesn't look like, this looks like a square, right? Well, if I take this off, and you might want a pry tool. This is like a mobile phone pry tool here. See, that's actually more of a rectangle. I, I don't know if these are supposed to go on there. Let me hold them right next to each other. Yeah, I don't think they're the same. Mm, unless this is a bigger rectangle than the longest part of this, this here. Well, let's try it. I really wish there were some instructions. Now, see, it doesn't want to go on. So that's why I'm going to default back to the ammo can. Which I think is cool. I think it would have been cool if there were two. There are instructions. They're just in this bag here. Okay, well, let's take a look at this. How old is this toy set? This is from 2006, so that's pretty old. And then, yes, this would have answered a lot of the stuff I should have figured out more easily. Oh, this little back plate comes off, and then you can access screws there. So if you want to take that apart, try to see what else might be new. Well, anyways, there's some other robots in the series, and there's nothing on the back. So let's put that aside for now. There's a fan club thing here. And then you do have this index card with uh, scenes from the show and some stats, probably backing cardboard and then the name tag thing.
All right, before I put the last two bits on, yeah, there are extra pieces, you know, hooks and stuff like that, and armor plates. But this guy is missing the elbow armor. I looked in the package, it's just not there. So this is a poor design, you know, this, this piece here. So that's why I crazy glue them. It got lost at the factory. I decided to not have any ammo boxes on the side, because this guy is a more of a melee character. And here's what the, the rifle looks like on its own. Oh, I guess I do need at least an ammo pack on the rifle. And then this thing articulates, this little grab handle. There's no, you know, recess though in the barrel, so that's kind of weak, I think. It could have been nicer to have a barrel indication. Okay, extra hands if you want to have left and right of that. These antennae. And actually, let me go get those painted uh, crossbow pieces. Here are those paint, painted pieces, more like a gunmetal. You may have noticed in the first uh, part where I cut all the pieces off for the spruce for this, I used a two-step method. I cut crudely and then I did a finishing cut, two cuts to get all these pieces off. But then on this one, all I did was do, do a first cut using my uh, god hands, my modified god hands. I made them, uh, I sanded this surface down so they're perfectly even. And for these parts, it seems like a, you don't need to do the two-step method. I'm just doing right, right off the sprue, nice and tight. There you go. So, always experimenting. Okay, so you can see it's pretty tight. That was a rounded surface. Maybe that's not the best example. But here's a flat surface, so it doesn't leave any much plastic behind, if any at all. And uh, obviously, because it's painted, it's going to show up. But you should, uh, if you wanted to look perfect, you'd cut all these pieces before you paint them. But I don't really care so much. I didn't even notice that this piece was on here, so it doesn't match. So you can see the original silver, the plastic silver, which uh, just looks cheap, you know, versus a painted product here. Alright, maybe later I'll paint that another day, but... Actually, that's so loose. Yeah, I, I might have to paint that and then glue it in place because I think it's going to fall off and get lost. All right, looking at the instructions, I'm wrong again. Sure, it's missing this elbow armor, but that's on purpose. It's because the crossbow goes there. So this crossbow just has this one little pin, and you know, there you go. So that's that's it in the cocked position. There's also a shot position if you want to put that in but I'm not gonna bother and also this spike you can store it in the leg if you want so I guess yeah maybe I will show you that because I painted this it is actually a really tight fit alright so the spike if you want you can store it down here like that and then I guess this is the uncocked uh, method here. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of feel it'd be nice if they just gave you three spikes so you could always just have it in one or the other. You know, instead of just one spike, it just seems kind of weak. Alright, well for now, we'll just leave it like that because I like the contrast of that there. Now the antenna here in the back, there's two. There's one in a folded up position. And we would pop that in like this. Oh, I have a feeling it might be hard to take out though. Maybe I'll just lightly push it in there. Or we'll let it rest. So that, but that's kind of boring, right? So I will pretty much display it with this giant, crazy, unfolded antenna thing. Assuming this is even an antenna, I don't even know what it is. 
I haven't seen the uh, Votoms that has this thing. So, oh, there you go. Yeah, so this is a tight fit because I think it's the paint itself, the red paint is making the... Oh, what's going on? I crazy glued that. No, I'm sorry, I crazy glued the last one. Alright, so I am going to have to crazy glue this. Let me come back again. Alright, uh, so I went and just took a piece of metal. You could just also just take a nail, cut off the end, and jam it in here. But I actually just took a rod and put in a drill, and then I just put it against sandpaper, and I got a, uh, a blunt tip on it. Uh, sorry, I can't focus there. Mobile phones just really aren't meant to make YouTube videos, but they have bigger screens, so I can have a chance of seeing what I'm talking about. All right, well, anyways, so I left that thing down there, and I just have another spike in this uh, cocked position. So I'm going to show a few other scope dogs here. So the third one from this set is just basically this without the rocket pad pack. So there's no reason to build it. Here's a scope dog with a round mover and a bazooka. A round mover is like a space jetpack. Alright. Here's a marshy dog and that's for amphibious missions. So it has these wheels on the side, and then it's got inflatable tanks to help float it along. It's interesting. Here's a red shoulder custom, and it's got missiles and a Gatling gun, and a, I mean it's just maxed out with the arm armaments there. Uh, these little spin things aren't very smooth. And then here's another scope dog with a different type of rocket pack. It's got like a seven rocket pack there. So there are many, many variations of the scope dogs. Uh, you also see the shoulder on this one is on this side, but you can swap out the shoulder pads pretty easily, uh, the left and right that is. So. I could swap it to the other, but I think that's the way it came. Maybe this is the last red shoulder or something. I, I haven't seen that, so I don't know. Okay, let's get these other ones out of the way. And then just let these two, last two, spin in glory. Let's see the antenna. So it's a good pack. I, I thought I was really just getting this to be unique, but I'm very thankfully happy that uh, these other two are unique to my collection, you know, with this funky chain backpack thing going on. So I'm going to keep these two. I'm going to sell the third one off uh, on eBay. So, But this is a pretty pricey set, so it's going to be an expensive one. But you can't really... It's hard to find this much detail in something this small. There's so many moving parts that uh, that's why I like these things. I'm not sure if I'm going to get any other of these Takara Tomy 148 scales. I think I might have. That'd be a unique casting, uh, but only time will tell. I really only hope that Takara Tomy makes more. There are other uh, Votoms robots that no one else has done, according to the MEHQ website. Alright, well thanks for watching, and this won't be the end of the Votoms videos, just maybe these Takara Tomy ones. Alright, but I'll see you in the next Votoms uh, vid.